brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. This is the Ramsey Show, where we help you win in life. We want to help you win with your money. We want to help you win in your work, and we want you to win in your relationships. The phone number for your questions is 888-825-5225, 888 5225. I'm Ken Coleman, and I'm joined by the illustrious, the incomparable, the fabulous Jade Warshaw, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How about that? I How gave you that? three adjectives today. Listen, my so eyebrows couldn't keep up. I was trying to <laughs> keep up with you. I like that. So we are here for you. Jade will uh, take the lead on those money questions. And then anything related to your work, specifically, how do I make more income so we can get through these baby steps faster? I want to help you ideate on those questions. So give us a dial. 888-825-5225. We started off in the ATL where April joins us. April, how can we help today? Hi. So my question is, do I sell my home to get out of debt and a bad man? Mm, maybe. Wow. Tell, Tell us. us more. Yeah. So um, I got married less than a year ago. I didn't know I was going to be emotional. I got married less than a year ago, and I came to the marriage with debt. Okay. Um, I have about $91,000 of debt that is not including the home. My home is worth um, about $180,000 positive, so I have 180 in equity. Okay. Um, my marriage has gotten progressively more toxic mm. to the point of uh, verbal threats of harm. Um, it's already been emotionally and verbally abusive, but now there are threats of harm. So my question is, would it be a good idea to sell my home, to start over from scratch financially, and to get out of this marriage? Well, let's start with the most important thing first, which is getting into a safe place and out of this marriage. Yeah. That's, that's thing number one. Do you have a plan in place that you're able to put into action immediately? There's somewhere I could go. I could always go to my mom's house. Yeah, you because should. Because we live together. Um, I could always go to my mom's house. I don't I don't have a plan. I'm just confused at this point. I, I do think you need to go to your mom's house because any man that would make a threat to physically harm you, you can't stay there tonight. Right. Yeah. And right. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so, mm -hmm. so, so, so sorry. This was not yeah. what you pictured when you said, I do. No one pictures that, right? No. Okay. Deep breath for both of us. All right. You're going to mom's house tonight and we're going to come up with a plan that you can move out, be on your own and feel like you have some confidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about what you're earning. What, what are you bringing in um, every month? Um, as little as 6,000. I'm in commissions. Okay. I get paid commission. So as little as 6,000, as much as 10. Okay, six to ten. What do you do? Car sales. Mm -hmm. Okay, good job. All right. So can you kind of go through this $91,000 of debt with me just so I can get a handle on what it is? Can you kind of itemize yeah. it for me? Yeah, so around 50000 in student loans, about um, 10000 in a personal loan, uh, 20 Okay, 50 student loans, 10,000 personal loans, $6,000 on a car. Okay. And um, 25 on um, credit cards. Okay. 25,000 or 2,500? 1,000, 1,000. Okay. Um, I yeah, I haven't made great choices on <laughs> Is this in your name or his name? Both of your names? This what? is that I brought. Okay. okay. And do you guys currently yeah. share your finances? Like, are you sharing bank accounts? Are you sharing that sort of thing? Not anymore. Uh, we tried the Financial Peace University. As soon as it came time to put it in act, he immediately put our joint account in the negative. So I don't contribute to that account anymore. Okay. So for all intents and purposes, you're separate. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So tell me about the living situation. Are you guys renters? Do you own a house together? Tell me about that. He owns his own home, which he's renting out. And I own my own home that we live in. Which is the one you told us you had the equity in. Correct. Okay. So it's your home. Um, yeah. So you can, you can, it's as, e when I say it's as easy, it's not easy, but you can ask him to move out. Right. Okay. Okay. So 
head back around this. Okay, so what about savings? Do you have any savings? No, I'm in a financial distress, which I haven't experienced since I was very young. Okay. Um, and to be married and experiencing it now is crazy. Mm-hmm. Are you behind on anything? No. Okay. No, I have to think about that for a second. No, everything's current. Okay, that's a good place. So the good news is, the good news is, in this way, you're not really beholden to anybody. You're not dependent in in the way that this is his house, or you you know you have a level of independence here that's in this case good. Um, mm-hmm. And at this point, really, it's just if you're talking about the financial side, it's you walking the baby steps like anybody else. Uh, the good news mm-hmm. is, I think you have a good income. You know, obviously, it's better when you make ten thousand in a month. Uh, but mm-hmm. there might be the situation where you can add to that in side hustles. Do you have any children, or do you guys have any kids together? No kids together. I have a child in college, and I'm paying for him to breathe. <laughs> okay, okay, but no, no little kids. Nobody at home that no. needs your time. So for no. you, the name of the game. I mean, it's twofold. Just like we would tell anybody else, we're looking for ways to get the income up. Whether that's you side hustling, maybe you can take on more uh, time at the dealership. Whatever that looks like, that makes sense for you. And then it's bringing the in- expenses down. Um, so that's what we're looking at. And at the end of the day, we're taking these debts smallest to largest, right, Ken? I mean, $6,000 car first. Yeah, absolutely. So you get some momentum. But I, I think in conjunction with, with what's going on here, I think because you own the home that you guys are currently living in, um, I think we got to play serious play serious with this guy. Mm-hmm. I think you have to say, you're never going to threaten me again or I'm calling the authorities. I'm mm-hmm. going to my mom's house uh, until you move out. And this can all be pressed pause on if you agree to go to counseling. Uh, but but at this point, when a man threatens you, uh, I think he's gone way too far. And I would call him out on it and say, never again. Uh, you made your last yeah. threat. Now, if you want to go get some therapy and you want to, we, we can sit down with a professional where you feel safe. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But I agree with what Jade said. But I, w- I would let him know that I'm moving to protect myself. And I'm giving you X amount of days to get all your stuff out. And uh, the next time I see you, we'll be in divorce proceedings um, unless you're willing to sit down and and try to rescue this marriage. Because I always loved the idea of let's try that. We'll see if this guy's the real deal when you come to that. But I think at this point you have to play hardball with him and say, this is my home. I'm in debt. As you said, I'm in financial distress. So in this case, Mm -hmm. Jade, Mm -hmm. uh, answering the initial question, I don't think you have to sell this house. But I think that if this house represents a lot of pain and this thing does go the route of divorce, it might not be a bad idea to sell it, start fresh anyway. So Mm -hmm. you have some good mojo in the next house as you get healthy. But not uh, neither one of us are saying you have to sell this house. You make pretty good money. Yeah. And I think Jade's right. I think if you just get serious um, and take care of yourself and this is part of it. I think you can walk this out and you make mm-hmm. really good money. I think you have some extra motivation right now to sell as many cars as possible. So. Yeah. And hey, don't keep this a secret. Yeah, um, a lot of people would keep this a secret. Make sure you get some good girlfriends around you. This is the time if you got brothers, call up your brothers, call up your dad, call up your grandfather, call up your pastor. These are times where you don't, you let people know what's going on and that you need help and that you need people around you and let them help you and be there with you when you confront this person for the first time. Yeah, thank you so much for the call. We're rooting for you. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. Thrilled to have you with us. 888-825-5225 is the phone number. 888-825-5225. Want to help you win with your money, win with your work and income, and and win in your relationships. Jade Warshaw joins me. I'm Ken Coleman. We're thrilled to have you. Uh, And Jade, uh, my note said it's uh, it's time. You've got the the, uh, details there, so I'm going to bring you in here on this because you are a person who has done how many cruises? Like, how many cruises have you been on? Uh, I probably couldn't give you a number, but I I can tell you I've... Oh, gosh. X amount of... How many cruises per year for how many years? Well, I did about... 
oh gosh, I probably did about 30, like about 40 weeks a year for a long time. Okay, so, so how many years would you say? A decade. So, so four, minimum, <laughs> minimum 400 cruises. Well, no, because you can go on for like, I would go on for like three days and leave and then go on another one in five oh, days and right. leave. So I'm going to double it. 800 cruises. I've been to 92 countries, Ken. Yeah. And you were a professional singer. Yeah. And uh, and so when you hear about the Live Like No One Else cruise, are you like, are you serious? I can't get away. I've been on the land for a long time. Now you're <laughs> back and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun. Listen, this, this one's going to be different. But you're speaking this time. Yes. You're not singing. I'm not. Unless you decide to spontaneously lead the crowd on in some type of thing. But Play us a song, piano man. <laughs> Just kidding. I is. would never. There no. it is. But I you're going to be speaking along with Dave Ramsey, myself, right. John Deloney, yeah. Rachel Cruz, Seven George days. Camel. Seven days at sea. Yeah. March 22nd through 29th. This is coming up next year, duh. Uh, and we'll be stopping in Kent, Turks and Caicos. I'm excited about that. St. Thomas. Love that. Puerto Rico. Love that country the Bahamas. Well, territory yeah. yes the territory there um and here's the thing we are starting to see cabins running low so if you want to do any type of vip upgrade those are basically sold out so if you're even trying to pick up a cabin you need to log on now to do that if you want one with an ocean view you need to get your deposit in now the deposit is 600 bucks so for anybody thinking man i gotta pay for the whole thing at up front it's not really like that you know you pay 600 bucks and then at the next appointed time you pay the other money so that's the way it works you can book your cabin today at ramseysolutions.com slash cruise and uh, we'll be there. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll so be there. make your decision now. And again, uh, these are for people that are in baby steps four, five, six, yes. and seven, obviously. That is right. Uh, so if you're not there, sorry, but now you have a little extra motivation beyond all your other dreams and goals as well. That's so right. going to be a lot of fun, going to sell out. And I got to see if I can get that um, the captain's hat from Gilligan's I Island. I have a couple. Oh, but I want to get it on Dave. At some point, I want to get him to put it on without like frowning at me or shouting an insult. <laughs> he might frown at you. I could definitely see uh, that. I, but I think I think I think people want to see that. They do. So I'm going to get my hands on one of those and get him to, through crowd pressure, put yeah. that on. I expect to see you in a captain's hat. Ken. Well, that's easy. You're going to be in linen. Trust me. You're going to be in your uncle cage sandals. I'm going to look like I stepped out of the J. Crew Ralph Spring edition of the catalog. <laughs> There's no question about it. I've already got two different types of deck shoes I'll be wearing. Oh, wow. Over, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, well, you I mean, know, when in Rome, you know? Well, my copy here says that we've got big news, and it said that the big news was the Live Like No One Else cruise. But I know about some other big news, Ken. It's your birthday. Oh, I, you, you did it to me. It I didn't is. know where you were going at first. It's your birthday, Ken. Guys, it is, it is, Col it is. Kenneth Wayne Coleman. It is his birthday. Oh, he yeah. is turning Go 40 ahead. for the second time in 10 years. <laughs> Also known as 50. Yeah, I, you know what? Men are not ashamed of this, folks. I'm 50 today. Uh, the big 5-0. Ken, keep doing what you're doing. I'm trying. It's you're the moisturizer. It good, it's the moisturizer. All right, uh, you do that. But thank you. Yes, thank you, Jade. Uh, you'll have to sing to me later today. I've got to get that Whitney Houston style. <sighs> Can you do that after the show? Save a little bit? I'll save it Save a little bit for the gathering. Okay. All right. So fun. Yes. Uh, can't believe I'm 50, James. It got here a lot faster than I thought. I never thought you were a day over 35, Ken. Thank you. Well, the Botox helps. All right, Columbus, Ohio is where we go. Amy is waiting for us. Amy, how can we help? Hi, I'm wondering if I should take a job offer from a approach from a company. This would be about $30,000 more. However, the schedule wouldn't be as great. Or if I should stay with my current company, who I just started with in May, for a better schedule. Okay. So if I'm hearing this right, this is as simple as better pay versus better schedule. Is that about right? You are correct. And which way are you leaning before you called us? It was so hard. Um, of I course, I, I love the personal time. This $30,000 raise would also bring more opportunities for growth later. Um, it is a leadership position. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there's the responsibilities of that. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you feel about that part of it? I enjoy helping people, um, and I enjoy guiding people. Of course, Good. it's completely different when you're the person that's always yeah. um, the one that someone's looking towards. So yeah. it's it would it's definitely intimidating, and I think that's the biggest part. I'm intimidated, and I oh, don't okay. know if, okay. if it's the right move. So so that's probably more of a factor than the schedule issue, correct? Quite possibly. Yeah, it's scary. 
Have you ever led before, been in any type of supervisor role before? I have uh, for a short period, yes. And how did you do? How would you grade yourself? I, especially since I was very new at it, I did well. Um, Yeah. Probably about a beak because, of course, there's always room for growth. But yeah, I for you. people people said that they yeah. enjoyed what I did, and enjoyed helping, or yeah. they enjoyed me yeah. helping them. Excuse me. What if I told you that you could be a really great leader if you just asked two questions every week? Would you believe me? I would try to. Okay, so I'm going to give you two questions. I want to address this, and then let's get to your decision. But real quick, I just want to take the fear factor out of leadership. And it is intimidating, by the way, and that's very natural to feel. But if you were to boil leadership down to two basic actions, I believe it takes away the the intimidation factor, and I think it's going to make you extremely effective. And here are the two questions. This is for your direct reports, and I think you do this on a weekly basis. The first question is, how are you doing? That is not a greeting in the hallway. How you doing? It is a look them in the eye and go, hey, how are you doing? Everything good? And you should know enough about them to where you can just lean in. And we're not talking about getting up in their business. We're talking about what little bit they share. They will begin to share more over time. But how are you doing as a person? Okay, I heard your dog was sick. Or uh, word is that your mom's going through something. You know, whatever they're sharing, you've heard it and you lean in as a person to say, how are you doing? To let them know that you care. The more you ask that question, the more they will know you care and the more they will trust you, which leads to the second question. And they will be willing to answer the second question the more they give you answers on the first one. And the second question is, how can I help you win? Okay. And that is, People want to know that their leaders know what they're dealing with. Do they have the resources? Do they have the time? Are you tuned in to what's going on in their job? If you if you ask those questions on a weekly basis over time, you will develop unbelievable communication and trust through the transparency that's going on with those two questions. You got it? Yes. Now, that will make you a really effective leader. I promise you. Okay? Now, let's just talk about the decision. The long term is what I was going to ask you about, and you already gave us that answer. So... You said this job with more money also gives me more opportunity long term. For me, I'm going to go with the long term opportunity uh, as long as the new schedule change isn't some type of massive, massive disruption that would make my family life such a dumpster fire, Jade, that it wouldn't be worth the long term opportunity and the short term pay. What do you think? I agree with you wholeheartedly. So is that the case then, Amy? Will the new schedule be super negative or disruptive to your personal life? It would be somewhat of a disruption. This is, if I could um, say, it's for hospice and my availability would have to be pretty much 24-7 for a short period of time, at least a year, until we get full staff on board because, of course, things can happen in an instant. That would mean I'm missing holidays as well. So here's the deal. Can you do that for a year? for the payoff i think i would like to well then i think you got your answer we never get to answer these questions our job is to poke around tell you what we think that's good but but i i think you're ready to take this new role and i think for a year you and your family can step up by the way jade uh give you the last word on this we got about 30 seconds i think it's all in how she communicates this to all the family members that will be affected I agree. Um, They can kind of jump in and support. Yeah, I think so. Understanding it's a short, like we always say, short-term sacrifice, long-term gain. Yeah, I love it. All right. So we are in agreement. Go for it. Stack that extra cash. I like that $30,000 bump and what that can do in the short term to set you up for the long term as well. Don't move. More of your calls coming up. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw joins me. The phone number is 888-825-5225, 888 Let's go to Indianapolis, Indiana, where Zachary joins us. Zachary, how can we help today? Hi, how are you guys? Uh, we're doing great. What's going on? So, um, 
I'll cut to the chase. Monday, I lost my house in the house fire. What? Um, for at least four months. Yeah. Oh my god. What do you uh, What do you mean at least for four months? What it, was it total? Uh, it was It was contained to one room, thankfully, but we had a lot of stuff in that room that the room is completely gone. They have to completely gut it and reconstruct it. I guess. Okay. Nobody was hurt. No. Uh, okay. The dog was inside, but oh, thankfully they got him out. Okay. Okay, so pup is okay, and when you say it's only one room, is that downstairs, upstairs? What was in the room? Uh, it was our downstairs master bedroom. Um, oh, no. We were actually supposed to sell the house four days prior, um, well, four days after the fire had happened. Oh, my gosh. Um, but that's not happening anymore. <laughs> right. Um, so, thankfully, like, a lot of my stuff was packed up and ready to go but like my wife's entire wardrobe oh, everything like our our, ma- our bed our newborn son's bed and everything is oh my gosh totally gone. where were you guys yeah. when this happened um i was an hour away at work and my wife was at work oh my gosh and that your newborn son uh he was at uh grandparents oh my gosh thank wow. goodness but the rest of the house is okay yes so- uh my stepdad was driving by when it started to smoke really bad so he oh caught gosh. it so, what happened what caused the fire do they know um it was one of the outlets by our bed they're not exactly sure but they think maybe a wire came loose and like touched the insulation or something or that, a mouse chewed on it oh that my that is crazy well i'm so glad yeah. everybody's yeah. okay I, well a couple of yeah. things to be grateful for Obviously, yeah, you guys weren't there. Your wife was not there. Your baby son, the dog is okay. My goodness. And your father-in-law and, driving by. Yeah, and I love that. <laughs> yeah. and, and again, grateful that it's just the room. And four months from now, you've got a rebuilt master. Now, I know all of the other things that come with that are awful, but but it, all things being equal, this is uh, you dodged a major, major crisis, yeah? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, so how can we help today? So we were planning on selling the house because – my wife bought it before me and her were ever together, and it is a nightmare of a house. Um, foundation issues and everything Electrical else. issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so we were really wanting to get out of it. Um, we were buying a new house um, closer to my parents, and it's a lot nicer house. But Did you already make the offer? Lose. Yeah, but we are doing a contingency buy. So Got it. Okay, we're good. we're probably going to lose that house now that... We yeah. have to wait another four months. Yeah. Um, we have just started the baby steps. We've got about $85,000 in consumer debt. Okay. Um, we don't have much savings, especially after the fire now. Um, and then... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What have you, what what have you, you been have? doing? Yeah. Um, we, we just started it, so we had the emergency fund, but now with the fire and stuff, we... The thousand yeah. dollar emergency fund, or yeah, yeah, thousand dollars. Okay, so um, um, here's what I think. So, where are you staying right now? Right now, we're at my parents. Okay, you're at your parents. You've blown through most of your thousand dollars. What do you have left? Uh, right now we've got. I want to say, well, she actually made an ex- extra car payment, so oh, we're gosh. waiting for that to come back. But okay. we'll have about thirteen in our account, but we have bills and everything and i do a ton of driving for work so i have to leave at least five to six hundred in there for gas okay so okay is insurance going to cover the total rebuild or is there going to be more cash yeah, you're going to have to yeah come they're going to cover it but they are kind of dragging their feet so <laughs> right okay i think you're a little new to the baby steps and so i kind of want to yeah. reset and get everything on on so that you and i are at least on the same footing kind of going forward um, I hate that this happened to your house and I hate that you guys had a plan and this just mm. threw wrenches all up in that plan. However, in one way, like Ken said, you dodged several bullets here and I'm going to add another bullet to the list that I believe that you that you dodged. Now, looking at your financial situation, fire aside, now was not the time yeah. for you guys to buy a house. Yes, like, I agree. You um, know, I originally wanted to rent, but we live in a small town and um Leaving the town is not an option for us because of my wife's uh, work, and uh, that's where our babysitting situation is located. Uh-huh. Um, and they, there is no places to rent that wouldn't be the same amount as what our mortgage was going to be. Okay. Um, that has the space for uh, two kids, us, and a dog that allows dogs 
Um, there was one place that was available and we applied and we got denied because of our credit. And then, um, and then it went off the market like a week later. So, so, okay. So to address that, um, unless you were going to, unless by selling this house, let's pretend the fire didn't happen for a minute, unless you were going to have this, this huge amount of equity that was going to allow you to get into the next house and pay off, you know, this debt or something like that, that would have been the only way it would have worked out. And if you had called yeah. us prior to that, I would have said, you could just got to keep looking, look for the right rental because mm -hmm. something will come on the market. That's what I would have said to you in that situation. But where you're at now is okay. Insurance is going to cover the rebuild of the master bedroom. You know, you guys are in a place that, you know, hopefully you're not spending a whole lot st staying with family, but you are going to spend some, but you've still got, you know, you're yeah. still working. So the income is coming in there. Um, we've got to prioritize this debt. And yeah. that's got to be the number one thing, because technically, Zachary, when you go to buy a house, you want all of your debt paid off. Then you want to have saved up three to six months of expenses. That's not talking about a down payment. That's just you having money, you know, when you move into this house. And then it's like, okay, I need a down payment. So you guys were quite far from being there. Uh, when you sold the house, what was it going to bring? Uh, we were going to get about uh, 15000 in equity. And then my sister was also going to give a gift uh, for a down payment as well to help us with that. Okay, and when you got that gift from your sister, what percentage-wise was that going to be towards your next down payment? Um, we were going to be using an FHA loan, but it was going to be roughly 12 to 15. Yeah, yeah, I, I think in many ways this was a blessing in disguise because I think you guys are about to get in way too deep. Mm -hmm. You always want to make sure that you're putting at least 5% down on a house. You want to make sure it's no more than 25% of your take-home pay. These yeah. are the things you want to make sure of. Um and going forward, now is just not the time. And hopefully, what I would do, what I would do for you guys, if the house that you're in is a nightmare, obviously there's electrical things that need to be fixed. Obviously, there's other things. Those are things that you might have to shell out some money to fix in the meantime. Because the solution, and can we see it all the time? Uh -huh. My car broke down. I'm just gonna trade that in and trade up and get a new car with right. payments right. because we yeah. don't have the $2,000 to fix it. So we get a $20,000 car. Right? right. And the worst, I said this to Dave on Friday, the worst thing is, and I'm not saying that this is you, but you buy a $500,000 house, but the AC breaks and you don't have $5,000 to fix it. Yep. Right. That's right. Yeah. Happens all the time. So push, push pause on home buying. It's not the time. Yeah. Rebuild, get your life back on, on, on track get the things fixed in the home that's going to make yeah. it a safe place for you to live. And that's right. And hey, let's look at the positive on this. I think Jade's right. And I think I'm going to give you just a little bit of a, I think hopefully a little mindset hack here. You know, you get a new master bedroom, Hey. you know, in the sense of, you know, yeah. did you lose some stuff? Yes, that stinks. She lost her wardrobe. That's awful. Yeah. All those things are just awful, but baby safe, dog safe, you're safe. You know what? You had a really old master bedroom. Mm -hmm. Now you get a new master bedroom. And I, I, I like Jade's, pressing pause right here and just kind of going you know what life just threw us a curveball but what let's hit the curve yeah yeah you know like i know i you know i'm, I'm stuck in this baseball uh, metaphor but stay with me you know curveballs yeah. are meant to strike people out come on but Ken. let me tell you something uh really good hitters know how to hit a curve and if you hang a curve these people put it out of the park they smash it and i think right now I think for the coaching you just got from Coach Jade over here, I think you guys can take this this curveball that life threw at you and you absolutely hit a grand slam and come out of this thing way better off. So please listen to what she said. I think she's absolutely right. And I think you guys got a second chance. Mm -hmm. Not fun. Not fun how you got it. But nonetheless, a second chance. So there you go. All right, don't move. She's Jade Warshaw. I'm Ken Coleman. We're here for you. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw joins me. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Chad is joining us now in Sioux City, Iowa. Chad, how can we help today? 
I can. Hi, Jay. Nice to talk to you. Um, I'm calling just because I'd like to know if it would be wise to convert a 401k to a Roth. Oh, um, okay. That's a good question to ask. So are you moving jobs? Is that what's causing jobs. you to... I'm, 50, I'm, I'm 53. My wife's 52. Okay. Um, kind of got into this late in the game. We have about 560000 total in uh, investments okay. and mutual funds between uh, 457 at my work. She has two IRAs, and then I have a Roth. I was looking to, to convert her IRA into a Roth. How much um, is it? And that 170000 Okay. Um, wh- so here we work through a series of baby steps. Um, I'm not sure how right. familiar you are with them, um, but technically... Okay, so do you guys have any debt? No debt. No debt. Okay, what about the house? Houses are paid. Okay, yeah. If you want to start that process, I would say yes. The only caveat to that is, obviously, if you're in baby step two, we don't want you to do that because you're going to be on the hook for the taxes. And, uh, you know, that money can be used otherwise if you're on baby step two. But for you guys, it seems like the right move. Um, Are you working with uh, a tax guide or anybody to help you in that area? Yeah, I I do have those people in place. I kind of wanted to get your guys' opinion before I went and actually um, and, and spoke to them about it. Yeah, if if I were in your shoes, I would start trying to make that move. I mean, I don't know if you listened to a few days back, but we had a guy who he had amassed such a, a wealth, $8 million, but it was all in traditional funds. And so he was just getting nailed with, you know, required minimum distributions. And so there is a part of this where you do need to begin making that that transfer over to Roth. And I think that you need to work with a Ramsey trusted pro in order to do that. Somebody to help you with the tax side of it and somebody to help you with the investment side of it. So if you need that, we'll make sure that Christian picks up and gives you that. But if you're asking if now is the time, my answer is yes. Yeah, I agree. I I, I don't disagree because of the way you walked it through. I mean, we've got the baby steps. And again, the timing on this, this is why our formula matters. It matters big time. And that's why we always say match beats Roth beats traditional. Like right. we want you investing where there's free money, but at the end of the day, the Roth is, yeah. I mean, yeah. the whole point is when you go into those retirement years, A, you don't want to be taking, having to pay taxes on yeah. what you're pulling out of there. Right. And B, if you do amass the type of wealth that we hope that you do, if you're in traditional and you're having to take those required minimum distributions, you're paying taxes on that. That's right. And yep. that has the yep. ability, depending on how well you've done, yep. to boost you up That's into right. some tax brackets. So, textbook, yes, on this one. Yeah. Uh, and, and I love how you walked him through that. So our new audience, make sure you're paying attention there uh, as to the why, why, why it's a yes for Chad, because yes. for some it's not. So really, yeah. really good uh, review there. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Tampa, Florida now. And Valerie is joining us there. Valerie, how can we help? Hi. Um, so I'm calling in. Um, I'll be but you know, my age. I'm I have a wealthy 24, and he's planning on going to law school. Um, both have our undergrad, and as he's going to law school, we're um, wanting to have kids. Like we want to have like a big family, like from four to six kids, and we realize that we probably shouldn't be waiting till after he's done um, to start having kids. So then my question is, is like he's going back to school. He obviously won't be making money because he'll be in school for three years. Um, And then what would you recommend I do? Should I take out um, like loans for like housing and and expenses and like food? No. Or should I work through law school and send my kids to daycare? Well, first of all, we don't have any kids yet, right? No, but like I'm definitely planning on having. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, so I'm stepping in here real quick because I'm going to play old man because I'm 50 today, Valerie. So I'm feeling extra wise. Okay, I got a good night's sleep, <laughs> um, and I want to I want to start off in this, and then I want Jade to. Well, she has no problem taking issue with me if she disagrees, but I hear I hear some things that 50 year old Ken says. Slow your roll, youngster. Mm-hmm. All right, let me just go through a couple things. How old are you and your husband, and how long have you been married? 24 and we're uh, three and a half years. Three and a half years in. Okay. And so if we start trying to have kiddos today, there are no guarantees that we're going to have them in the timeline that we want. Would you agree with that statement, Valerie? It, yeah, correct. But also he's, he's going to be going to law school in 
fall of 2025. Doesn't matter. I, this is my timeline. You follow me. Don't jump off the timeline, Valerie. I see what you're trying <laughs> okay. to do. I'm going somewhere with this. You have no idea that you guys are going to get pregnant when you want to get pregnant. You have no clue. Okay. So he's going to law school when? Starting in the fall? A couple yep, weeks? Fall of 2025. Oh, fall of 2025. So mm-hmm. he's got a year to work. Yes? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, he does. All right. And I have another uh, another suggestion here in a second. Here's my point. Um, you are asking if you should take out loans for something that may not be absolutely in need. You, you, you could be working full time and not have kids, stacking cash, cutting your expenses. Um, and so I think this is a bad idea to even consider it uh, because because here's here's what I know about law school. Where is he going and what is it going to cost? So he's going to... Um... It's in uh, St. Pete, and he's planning on getting a full-ride scholarship. Great. That um, was my so, – great. So, yeah, so why would we need money? Then, why would we need student loans if he's getting a full ride? Did you say he's planning oh. to get or he's getting? Yeah, he's planning on getting, um, like, based on his LSAT score okay. and – Absolutely. And his um, – all of his things he got, yep. he should be getting a full ride. Perfect. You know, for whatever reason – if he doesn't, we'll have to pay whatever. But anyway, um, so yeah, my question is if, but like you know, preventative. If we are in law school and like I'm, I'm pregnant. Like, what, what would you recommend? Like, would you recommend you know, mom going to work, putting kid in daycare? No, no, I wasn't <laughs> finished, Valerie. Valerie, I wasn't finished. Sorry, Jake. No, go ahead, Kim. I'm gonna say this. You should not be trying to have kids. You're 24. Get through law school. It's two years max, right? No, it's not. It's three years. Who it's, cares? So three You're years. You're 27. Apiece. Stop this nonsense. Stop it. Stop uh, it. It is not smart in this situation for you to be planning to have kids right now. Just chill oh. out until you get the cash to be able to have kids, or you have a budget where you can have kids. Don't walk yourself into a student loan because you think you got a mama timeline. Stop. It's not smart. Jade? Yeah, well, I'm planning on having like four to six kids. I don't so care. I, can, okay, I planned okay. to dunk a basketball when I was 16. It didn't work out. Okay, here's the thing. Listen, Ken is. Yeah, Ken I'm is, not going to wait till I'm old to start no, trying You don't to have any control. Not, you don't over even it. have to wait till you're old. Let me just throw it to you like this Mo- Mom to future mom. Oh. A, there's a couple of things here. Um, there is a. There is something. There's something. Um, It's important to plan, okay? All I'm saying is you have the ability to make a great plan here and to create as much of a situation where you're setting yourself up for success as possible. To Ken's point, you do have plenty of time. That's number one. But then we have to be aware of the things that we cannot control. A, you might get, listen, I hope you have six very wonderful pregnancies and they happen exactly when you want them to. But there is a part of this where, listen, the Somebody threw the cards up in the air and you don't know where they're going to land. So I love that you're planning. Do, if you're planning, then let's plan a way where you're not going into debt. That's all I ask. Yes. We're planning for a way that allows us to have the life that we want where we're not going into debt. Two, the other huge variable in this, Valerie, that you're forgetting about is once these babies come out of you, you don't know what you're going to want. You might suddenly be like, practice law. Yeah. What was I thinking? I want to stay home yeah. with these babies or right. I want to oh, do I'm part time or I want to homeschool them. My husband's my husband's lawyer. And so that right there, knowing that variable is a huge, I, not that I had to give you any more reasons not to go into debt, but the worst thing ever would be if you went into debt to get a degree and then you hardly used it for the next I, I'm not, 18 years. Like, I, I'm sorry. I'm not going to law school. <laughs> did, for, did we? Did no, we no, we know that? you're not. We know oh, you're not. I thought she was going to. No, too. she's not. Okay, well, no, still. No, it's her husband. Here's the deal. Uh, Still, Valerie, you've I think <laughs> Valerie, I think you've decided that you think it's okay because he's going to be a hot shot lawyer and he's going to be able to pay the loan back. Sorry, you called the wrong show today. I don't think you need to do this at all. He no. needs to work like crazy Six and kids? save up money. Good grief! All right, I got to go rest. I got to we'll rest. We'll be back. Too. This is the Ramsey Show.
All right, today's question comes from Melissa in Wisconsin. She says, I've been following the baby steps, and I'm very proud of how I've grown financially and personally. I have no debt, and I'm saving for retirement. During college, the relationship with one of my parents became very strained, and that parent took out a $20,000 Sally Mae student loan without consulting other family members. This parent is the only person on the loan, and my name is not on it. I know legally I'm not obligated to pay it back, but morally, what are your opinions on me paying it back to this parent? We've been estranged for years due to other circumstances, and I used the money in college for books and room and board. I've tried to consult other close Christian friends and my counselor who did not think I am obligated to pay it back since this person has made very poor financial decisions, multiple bankruptcies, and has not respected boundaries with me. What are your thoughts? I've got... I'll start. You start. You're, you're stuttering. Yes. Okay. You're stammering. I've got a, a strong you feeling You have a lot this. of thoughts. I do. Um... Okay, let me, there's a lot, of, a lot of different words we can use here. I would agree with your counselor that you are not obligated to pay it back, morally or ethically. But it has nothing to do with the other person's behavior. It has everything to do with the deal that was made. They took out a loan without your knowledge and without you promising to pay it. Therefore, you do not owe it. You did not handshake. You did not verbally you did not, certainly not on paper, and certainly legally did not sign for it. So you're not legally, ethically, or morally obligated to pay this loan, period. It has nothing to do with being estranged. It has nothing to do with, it, it, it makes it weirder. It has nothing to do with the other person's financial misbehavior and bankruptcies. That makes it weirder, but none of that is your fault and does not change your moral obligation one way or the other. Your moral obligation is based on your promise that was never made by you. And so you don't have a moral, ethical, or legal obligation. Now, if you want to be generous for some reason or another, then we can talk about it. But it's not an obligation. I I like that you said that. Here's where I was struggling with this. Let's say you did, Melissa, let's say you did take this money out and you shook hands. Hey, Mom, I need some more money for room and board and books have gotten more expensive and your mom said, great, I'm going to take out this loan, this Parent PLUS loan, and you can just pay it back even though you don't qualify to take out your own loan. Great. Then you, then you would pay it. And she ends up making f- very poor financial decisions, has multiple bankruptcies. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Respect you pay it anyway. Doesn't matter. That's right. So this external behavior is mm-hmm. not – I'm not going to let that affect my moral cause here. Um, I'm right. with you, Dave. It, the reason I took pause here is I'm thinking in my situation, if I have a parent who's struggling – they got me through college. I'm just torn on it. I'm just torn on it. I would probably try to figure out a way to pay it back. It would just me. be generosity, though. Right. It's not an obligation. That's right. And in my mind, too, it would be a what, how does it affect your particular life? Okay, you have $2 million in checking. Well, write a check and pay it off. Write the check. Okay, it's, yeah, yeah. it's like buying a biscuit. Right. Okay. You have no money and you're just now coming out of baby step three, just starting, you're 26 years old. And your mom's guilt you. Make $75, you make right. $75,000 a year. And you no, know, her, her voice in your head that you haven't even heard in a long time in person is guilt tripping you. Mm. Uh, then no, that's just uh, psychological backflips. There you go. You're just, doing, you're just doing gymnastics in your own brain. Yep. They're like somehow it's going to make her okay. Somehow it's going to make your relationship okay that you wave this magic money wand over it and everything's going to be okay. Nope, right. not going to happen. Uh, and so this does come down to two things. Number one is, do, are you obligated? The answer is no. Number two, do you want to be generous? And for me, if I were in your shoes, that would be that it's not a big deal. That you can. That $20,000, you're, you're, you're a doc and you make 400000 a year now. Right. I don't know. What, whatever scenario. We don't have her income or her net worth here. Um, but... Uh, you know, I kind of smell in the verbiage that this is a 26-year-old making less than $100,000 a year and doesn't have any money. Well, and to add on to that, this feels like, and, and Dave, we don't talk about this enough. We probably should. The number of parents who mortgage their souls for the kids to go to school, and they circle back 10, 15 years later asking kids, where's my, I need that money. Or had without, to, without having a deal. With, we never had a deal. We, I got you through college. Now mm-hmm. I'm looking at my retirement. Hey, I put $20,000 on the line. When are you going to pay me back? And well, that's the same idiot, though, that that um, it's common, man. That says you owe me because I changed your diaper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? 
that's the same. You know, I fed you when you were three. Oh, shut up. You signed up for that. That's right. You know, that's not. That's just bull right there. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, Mom. That's how this works. Yeah. Um, you know, but the, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. So, a um, lot, lot of stuff going on here. But, but I think, I don't want to be the psychologist here. You're that. You're that's your job. But in my mind, it sounds like. Um, you probably intellectually rise, but some part of your little girl self, Melissa, wants it to be that the script is rewritten if you write a $20,000 check it. that suddenly mom's okay and your relationship with mom's okay. And that's not going to happen. And it's not ever going to be the same. That's right. That house burned. Yes. And now you got to build something new. And if part of you building something new is, I'm going to go back to everybody who played a role in my life, and I'm going to be generous to them. That's cool. That could be a part of your house that you're building for you into the future. Exactly. It's not going to save mom. It's not got anything to do it's with not going to save them. Mom. That's right. This has got to do with you. That's right. Yeah. But it's not a moral, ethical, Christian obligation that you pay someone else's debt. That's right. It's that simple. And that's what a parent plus loan is. And then I think it is good. One more time, let's circle back for the sake of people listening because we have a student loan crisis that is of epic proportions. Moms and dads. Do not take out student loans of any kind and do not take out a parent plus loan and then saddle your kid with it when they're 30 suddenly at Thanksgiving dinner. Okay? That's relationship Russian roulette, number one. Number two, it's morally, ethically wrong. Number three, it's financially stupid. Okay? Don't do that. And so, uh, you know, this idea that, that, you know, send the kid to college at any cost including the cost of all our futures, mine and yours. We're going to all go deeply in debt so you can get a degree in left-handed puppetry.